It is good to be back. Glad to be back. Um, fabulous time in Ireland and England and Wales, but there is no place like home. There's no place like being with our family. And uh, you are family. Oops, I'm not sure where. <laughs> um, let's just pray. I want us to get into worship. We're going to do some sharing about the trip to Ireland today and probably some more again next week. Um, but number one, I want us to focus and keep our eyes set upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, that our focus is steadfast, it's pinpointed, we're not being distracted, we're not being taken off course but that we focus on the Lord to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So, Father, today we celebrate You. You are the great I Am, the wonderful God, the mighty Savior, the victorious One. You are the God who was and who is and who is to come. You never change and you never lose a battle. Father, You are El Gabor, the mighty warrior, you are the Prince of Peace and the King of Glory. You are our God and we are your people. We celebrate you today. We give you praise and glory and honor. And we know that what you have done in the past, you will do again. And we say, Lord, do it again through us. Do it again through us. Release your glory in us. Release your glory through us. Let the praise of your name be exalted and celebrated all across the land. And let your glory fill the house in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Let's worship our God. Let our praise be a welcome. Let our song. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. As we are here for you. Sing that again, let our praise and let our praise be a welcome, and let our songs be a sign that we are here for you. Oh Lord, we are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven, fill our hearts with your life, we are here for you, oh faithful God, we are here for you, to you our heart, to you our hearts are
do not faint you won't grow weary you're the defender of the weak you comfort those in need you lift us up on wings like you
postured to receive. You're not waiting for a nurse to call you into a back room to wait again. True? No, we're waiting because he says, seek me and I will be found. Seek me, press in. So I want us to go back and uh, Nathaniel take us on into worship, but I want you to speak to your soul and say, rise up. Rise up, soul. Speak to your spirit and say, ignite spirit by the spirit of God. Be ignited. Press in. Wait. Pursue. 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 Pursue that you may have that which God shows you. See, we're in a season we've got to see in a new way. We've got to see with eyes that are anointed with the anointing oil of the Spirit to see like we've never seen before so that we might move into holy expectation that no matter what goes on around us in the world, our faces are set like flint and we're not being moved. We're not being moved by what we see on the TV. We're not being moved by what the craziness is coming out of the White House. We're not being moved by any of that stuff. We know that our God is the God who rules and reigns on high, and He has never, ever lost a battle. So let's press in and pursue.
never be put to shame We do not wait in vain No one who waits on the Lord Will ever be put to shame So we say come alive In the name of Jesus Come alive in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles We bring everything to the feet of Jesus Everything in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles We say come alive in the name of Jesus Come alive in the name of Jesus this is a house of miracles We bring everything to the feet of Jesus Everything in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles This is a house of worship this is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name Sing it again This is a house of worship This is a place of praise where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name It's a house of healing This is a house of healing Our hearts are full of faith You have our full attention you have the final say, and you say, come alive in the name of Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles, we bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles So come, come alive in the name of Jesus Come alive in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles We bring everything to the feet of Jesus Everything in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles there's resurrection power Your blood runs through our veins Your kingdom triumphs over Even the coldest grave Sing it again, the resurrection There's resurrection power your blood runs through our veins Your kingdom triumphs over Even the coldest grave So come alive in the name of Jesus Come alive in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. So we come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. 
This is a house of miracles I still believe you're moving I still believe you're speaking God, I believe you're working All things will go I fix my eyes on heaven God, I receive your vision God, I believe you're working All things will go I still believe you're moving God, I believe you're speaking God, I believe you're working All things will go I fix my eyes on heaven God, I receive your vision I believe you're working All things will go I still believe you're moving I still believe you're speaking God, I believe you're working All things will go I fix my eyes on heaven God, I receive your vision God, I believe you're working All things will go So come alive in the name of Jesus Come alive in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles We bring everything to the feet of Jesus Everything in the name of Jesus This is a house of miracles Jesus, this is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Did you write this one? No. Nope. I thought maybe you did. Because it is the it is the word for this house. started the song, the Spirit of God took me back to a place that Sandra and I were able to go to in Wales called St. Govan's. I'd never heard of it before. But one who pursued God with everything and ended up making his abode in the cleft of a rock, literally. And when I, I'll pull a picture to show y'all. It'll be in the slides in a minute, but it's not identified. But literally on a coastline that's rugged and jagged, we had steps to get down to it. He wouldn't have had steps. But he lived there to pray and study, and then people would come to him for him to disciple. And it became a well of healing. 1,500 plus years later, they hold services in that little place to keep the well of healing going. Over 15, are you hearing me? over 1,500 years because of the residue of the anointing that's in the side of the cleft of the rock. When we were there and I was taking pictures, when Sonder was taking pictures, there were lights inside this place that showed up. We couldn't see them with the natural eye, but we could see them as we took pictures of the angels of the Lord that were in that place. Now the little chapel was built years later, but we were standing on the ground where this man of God supernaturally delivered from being captured. Again, see the theme. 
gave himself to prayer and study and to minister the word of the Lord, became a well of healing. I believe that's a portion of the call for this house. If I look around the room and see the number of miracles in this room that we're even standing here, that we're still breathing, that we're still alive, it's pretty amazing. Several of us on this platform right now, except for the grace of God, we would not be here. The miracle working power of God sovereignly touching and rescuing us from a sure death. But God, but God. I don't want Nathaniel to go back into this, but I want you, I know several of you have given during this song, the Spirit of God was moving you. But I just want you to come quickly as the Lord leads you to this altar and say, God, I want to be one of those that taps into the healing well. Because see, it's not just about people coming here to receive healing, although that will happen. It's going to be about you being that well wherever you are. About you being the one carrying the glory carrying the word of the Lord in your belly so strong that if you sit down next to somebody and they need healing, you have what it takes because the Spirit of God lives in you and you're not second guessing. You're saying, yes, Lord, I'm the one that's here. I'm the one that you're saying, pray for this one. I'm the one that's sitting right here and you're saying, decree my healing. Maybe it's healing, maybe it's a miracle, maybe it's the gospel of salvation for somebody who doesn't know, but that you will know in that instant that you are there as the well from whom waters can be pulled up. So Father, today as we respond to you, as we come into a place of surrender, as we come into a place to say, God, we're hiding in the cleft of the rock. We're pressing ourselves into a place of finding our pillow in your presence. That we give up all of our comforts. We give up anything that would keep us from you. That we press into you. That our ears are tuned to hear your voice to so move with your spirit that nothing would stop the flow of the healing wells, the miracle wells, the salvation wells, the deliverance wells. Lord, that this would indeed be a house of miracles, a house of healing, a house of deliverance, a house of salvation, a house of prayer for all nations, for all nations, God. Ignite within us a holy fire that will never, ever go out. Fan the flames that we might be all that you've called us to be in the mighty name of Jesus. And I do encourage you, move somewhere. Let God know you're, you're saying, I'm here. It's for your purpose, whatever you want. This is a house of worship This is a place of praise Where every demon trembles Where we proclaim your name This is a house of healing our hearts are full of faith You have our full attention You have the final say And you say, come
Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working. All things will good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe you're working. All things will good. I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working. All things will good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. I believe you're working. All things will good. So come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles Cause yours is the key Yours is the power Yours is the glory forever Amen Yours is the kingdom Yours is the power Yours is the glory Kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. Amen. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. Amen. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power. Glory forever, Amen. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever, Amen. You reign, God, you reign forever, your kingdom. 
Kathy, I want you and all that are going to be participating in the children's healing rooms just to quickly come up front. I know Nathaniel and Tiffany. I don't know who. I can't remember right now. Kolya and Wendy, if y'all would just, and the kids, any of the kids that you know that you're signing up to be trained for healing rooms, just come up here real quickly. an activation of the healing well and the children are going to lead the way look at this Jesus Father I just simply ask in the mighty name of Jesus that over each one of these that are positioning their hearts and their faith to be used in healing and miracles. That even now, even prior to them beginning their training process, Lord, that you would stir up and activate the Spirit of God in each and every one. That there will be a purity of heart, a purity of spirit that comes through. That they will be vessels of healing. Father, that for the adults that will be working with the children, for Kathy as she leads this team, as all of those that will be working, God, that there would be such a purity of heart that it would cause you to be delighted to flow in healing miracles. Lord, give them encounters with you in the night and in the day. Let the fire and the glory of your presence be their portion. Break off anything that would hinder any fears, any doubts, any unbelief. Break it off right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be an activation of the Spirit and the Word of God that will cause your glory to manifest. And Father, I pray in advance for all those who will come needing healing of body, soul, and spirit that they will find the purity of the living waters of Jesus among our children, among the healing room for kids, and that it will spill over into the rest of this congregation that indeed we will be a healing house for all nations. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. Wow, 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 wow. Awesome. I'm going to invite um, those that are doing the testimonies out of the thin places to come on up. Fabulous worship today. I love it. I love you guys. Um, what a blessing. It's a blessing. And I want to not forget to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Aren't we grateful for those who... Um, oh, Sandra, would you get the microphone? I forgot to bring it up with me. Um, for those who have fathered us both in the natural and in the spirit, we've had those who have fathered us and brought us into the place that we are and continue to do so. I know that many of you are wanting to hear uh, some stories and some testimonies out of our Thin Places tour, and I felt like the way the Lord said to, um, to do this was just have a few people share, and then I'll intermingle with some things uh, prior to us uh, going into the message. Patricia, if you'll just share what, and if you, I do want to tell you this, if you'll watch the screens, but listen. You hear that connection there? You will see some pictures out of our tour and then be able to hear some stories. First of all, I want to thank Apostle Jackie for all that she did. There was so much behind the scenes. So can we just give God praise for what she's done? This was truly an amazing journey. 
my life will never be the same. I've been many places, but there was nothing like this trip to Ireland. And one place in particular that I really had a revelation of something God was doing was at a place called Clon McNoise. Clon mm -hmm. McNoise. We had a lot of strange words, but <laughs> that was one of them. <laughs> but it was one of the earliest monasteries in Ireland. Um, many things we saw were in ruins, but even in this morning's intercessory uh, gathering, we prayed out of Isaiah 61 that, that said that we would rebuild the ruins. So our journey took us to places where Patrick had been, St. Patrick, and we were motivated, encouraged, anointed to retrace his footsteps. There was one particular place here at Clon McNoise where there was a St. Curran who loved to learn. And many of you, and I'm one of them, I love learning. You never get to the place where you know everything. Right. You are always blessed by opening your heart to learning. There were people who did sculpturing, painting, business, music. I could go on and on. It was, to me, an early replication of an apostolic hub. Absolutely. You know, I've been to the hubs, but when I went there, I had a revelation that this is truly what God wants to do. He wants to invite others in, whether corporately or individually. And, you know, Apostle Jackie always says, bring somebody, tell somebody about it. We want to make a difference, and we can't always do it one by one. We talked about that, me and my friend Rennell. We can't just do it one by one, but God can do it. He can give us the strategies. So we got together in groups based upon the interest that she's seen, the, the skills, the things that she's seen about us. And that's what an apostle does. She looks at her people and she pulls out of them what they can give to the body and to the world. And I am convinced that even this Friday, when Tim Karskaden comes, we need to be here. Because it isn't just about let's go and have another meeting. It's about coming and declaring that we want to be used by God. And that when we invite others in, they will hear the word, take that word out, and cross-pollinate the world. So thank you again. You're and welcome. it's been a blessing being a uh -huh. part of this journey. I'm so glad you were there. Vaughn McNoss is an amazing place of education, of arts, of business, of government. That's what an apostolic hub, a center, is supposed to do, is raise people up to impact all of culture. And it was clearly seen in that place. What an amazing location. Hey, Pamela. Um, good morning. Um, thank you also to Jackie and to Rose and Kevin and Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, to, uh, they were our guides, and it was wonderful. I mean, it's just, it was life-changing. What I want to talk about just a little bit is Slimish Mountain. And this is where it was, um, it just, um, when Kevin said, we were standing, we had went into uh, the area, and we had to go through a gate. We had to go through the sheep gate. I think that's what mm -hmm. they call it, sheep. And one at a time, you had to go through this gate. And when we got there, he said, this is not the way it looked when Patrick was here. Patrick was 16 years old, a slave. He had been captured and brought to Ireland, um, a country that he did not know. And he came out of wealth. Um, he's a very wealthy person. But it was like the Lord was stripping the worldliness away from him, totally away from him. But in and to look at the, the, the location where we were, you was looking at the rolling hills of green grass and the beauty of it, and that was not where he was. It was barren, and he was alone on that mountain. And But the thing that really struck me with him and with uh, Kevin and with all of the 
what they call saints, but they were really apostles, was the surrender. He had to surrender to the Lord. He had to, the Lord was the only one that he could, could, um, could depend on because no one else was around him. So that surrender and that focus on the Lord, just, he was praying 200 times a day. For six years, he was on that mountain, and even the Lord led him to go to the ship that would take him to freedom, but he had to walk 200 miles. I mean, this was, you know, he was so in, in, so saturated with Holy Spirit because he had to be in order to do what he needed to do. And I think that's where we are. We've got to get there. The Lord, we've got to let the Lord have his way. And we've got to come to a surrender where you give up everything because that's what he did. And that's just a little piece of what was there for me. Thank you, Pamela. Surrender is the key word. For every place we went, you could see the marks of surrender. Mm -hmm. A surrender that really most of us don't understand. But God's calling us and beckoning us to it. I say thank you, too, to you and to Sandra and Kevin and Rose and Paul. It was an amazing, life-changing thing. I had to bring my notes up here. There was a repeating theme at almost everywhere we went. And, and what I wrote at the end of it was, these men and women impacted and brought kingdom to nations through courage, not giving up, even, at, even to the point of death and losses of loved warriors. They persisted, but with prudent pursuit holiness, obedience, and steadfastness. And you know what? That's what I'm hearing from the apostles, from the prophets, from everything that we're hearing about what needs to be done for this nation. It comes under that profile, under surrender and not giving up. You know, the thing that hit me the most is we're, what, 300 years old? I mean... This next place that hit me was founded in 432 A.D. I mean, they, bought, they built things to last forever. They did not just build a building that would last for their generation. They didn't build a kingdom ministry that would last for their generation. They prayed prayers knowing we would come. That, that's what got me on Klon... Colin McNoise. Yeah, that place. <laughs> I was I've standing, practiced. and I, uh, there was this round tower where they would climb up. And I had a picture of this young man sitting at the top of the tower, praying prayers, knowing people would come. And we were those people. And y'all were there because we were there. So I may be able to tell y'all this. I think this is important because I went to Ireland knowing that he had something to give me, he had told me when I decided to go. We went to a church called Saul Church, and that's where Patrick's first church was founded in 432 A.D., and it's still a church. This is the place where God touched my heart so very deeply. He gave me an assurance, a promise, that going forward he would provide Prudent guidance. Mm. Now, I don't use that word. I can't remember using that word in the, you know, distant future, a distant past even, before that moment. I'm still unpacking that, but I got to tell you, opportunities came even the next day to walk in that prudent guidance. Yeah. And it felt as if someone touched my shoulder and said, do this. And it has continued since I've gotten back. So if you ever doubt that God still speaks or that he gives special surprises that you don't even know you've asked for, be encouraged. Amen. Amen. So much. I will say this at Saul Church, if you want to come over here. Um, that was the place, the second place on my first time 
to Ireland that really touched me. When Kevin released a message at that time about walking the land with pierced feet, with the heart of servanthood and humility, willing to serve even those who had abused him. And that's a part, it's a major part of what God's calling us to, that we would be willing to walk the land in, with pierced feet, loving as Christ loved, totally surrendered, and expecting him to, like Connie said, touch us on the shoulder and say, do this, go this way, say this, no, don't go there. Because he comes in guidance in both ways, both to say go and both to say stop. So, Sandra. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you, Rose and Kevin and Paul. They were, it was a great trip. It was more than that, though. It was really engaging yourself into the timeline of God. And um, Thursday morning, uh, after we'd gotten home Wednesday night, I just got up to get quiet. And um, we had gotten several words as we were leaving, you know, when you get home there's going to be a revelation to come. And so I just sat with the Lord that morning, and what I heard was your position for conquest. And, um, you know, one of the um, verses that I've had on my desk since I got a desk here at City Gate is Jeremiah 6.16, Stand by the road and look and ask for the ancient path where the good way is and walk in it and there you'll find rest for your soul and that was literally the path that we were walking um, Clay uh, Apostle Clay had given us a word a couple years ago back to your future go back to the future prophetically and that really was our journey across Ireland and Wales we went back to our future we saw things in us that had been molded and fashioned in us in this house about the apostolic training centers, the discipline of their daily prayers, the writing of scripture, the memorization of scripture. You know, they were doing this in very basic life conditions. I mean, they were having to prepare food, find food, prepare food take care of their basic needs. All the while, they're building walls to protect them from the ravaging pirates, uh, from the uh, druid lords that were on the next plot of land. I mean, it was a constant spiritual and physical battle, but their discipline of setting before the Lord to the point of you know, standing in freezing water to your waist so you can pray more deeply. I mean, I, you know, my mind wanders I'm in here, you know. I thought, how did they do that? Uh, but th what the foundation they laid, we are standing on. I mean, I was just really, um, I was really overwhelmed in one of them we went to, They and I don't remember which one, but they, they all of them had their, their high places, their plots of land, and you had to negotiate. They had to negotiate to come through your area. So not only were you taking care of those in your group and pursuing the Lord, but you had to be wise. You had to receive, give safe passage, or you had to deny and suffer the consequences. So they had a whole governmental ruling and reigning that was happening from every facet of their life. It just wasn't when they got in the prayer room. It was their life. They had to rule governmentally to know who the enemy was and what to do with the enemy at your door. Um, so I'm just been asking the Lord, you know, how do I mature your presence in my daily life? Um, because I think that's where he's... He brought us into a place of incredible discipline, incredible boundaries, incredible um, life-giving circumstances, but it was not easy to get there. And then when we went into Wales, that was incredibly wrecking. Oh, my gosh. When I sat in that seat where Evan Roberts cried out, bend me, oh God. And he falls over the little 
banister into the floor in the spirit and revival breaks. That, that drawing and wooing of the spirit is still in that building. Mm -hmm. It's on that property. It's in that atmosphere. And I was thinking, wow, we've come from the oldest apostolic training center into a tangible training center um, and a place where God is, the force of that property of the Spirit of God was just unbelievable. And where he is speaking to us today, bend me, O oh God. And I just pray that for myself, my family. I pray that for CityGate Atlanta. I pray, pray that over the shareholders. God, bend us that we would be that apostolic governmental ruling body that you have called us to be, that we can hear and see and do. And then we went into the Bible College of Wales, and it was just the same overwhelming experience of the presence of God. As we sit in the blue room where Reese Howell, you know, he had a Bible school. It wasn't, I mean, he had been following the Lord since a young man into incredible disciplines and incredible uh, circumstances in his family and what he had done for the Lord and sacrificed for the Lord. And when he built the Bible college, the Lord began to call him into prayer and intercession during World War II. And the fact that they would stay in intercession until Reese Howell got the release of peace. So it wasn't that they just came and prayed what they knew. They sat and waited. And Reese would get messages during the night, and he would wake everybody up, and off the, they would come out of their dorm and come into the blue room to intercede. I mean, it stopped the school for a period of months during World War II. It was incredible how they chose to step into the moment in time and be the vessel. And I just, I just prayed that over us. I said, God, that's, that is who we are. That is our DNA. You have a house of warriors. I mean, we've all come through circumstances that, you know, have not always ever been pleasant or fun, some of them, and we still have those things ahead of us that are not pleasant nor fun. But I'm telling you, in the fire of God, when we sang that this morning, I could feel that moving in the room because it is his fire that these people tapped into. So I just, um, I really chuckled because I thought our, our tour was called Thin Places, but really I thought we should have called it Back to the Future because <laughs> after our prophetic word, because I thought that's exactly what we were doing. Um, and then, um, I went back to look at what position for conquest meant. I looked up the word position. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, it said a situation that confers advantage or preference and arranged order. And I prayed over us that we would, be, each of us would be positioned in this house in the arranged order of God so that we are position for conquest, conquest, and conquest is acquire by conquering. So this body, I saw us again in that corporate armor, that one armor that we all fit inside of in this house, moving across this land, doing the assignment of the Lord, whatever it will be. So the Lord said, stir yourself up in me. Keep stirring yourself up in me. And remember the conquest over your own life that I have brought you through. Because I was, you know, it's overwhelming hearing all these stories and then thinking, well, I'm just this little dot in the world. God said, stir yourself up in me. Don't stop doing that and go back into your own history. That's what David did. He had a... Um, a staff with his history of conquering things that he had conquered, carved onto the staff. He says, keep doing it. Keep looking at it. I still am that faithful one in your life. And don't forget that. 
And then he said, the blood is your conquistador. I don't even know how to spell that word. <laughs> and I thought, okay, this has to be you because I didn't, I didn't even thought about I've never thought about that word. And so I looked it up, and it said, one that conquers. The blood of Jesus, the authority and power of the blood of Jesus is the one that conquers. My position is to stay in that. It is not to run ahead or run rogue or run, run crazy. It is to stay in the position that the blood of Jesus grants so that he can come into me and in this house and each one of us to do the very thing that he has so desired for us to do. So I just, he said, your position for conquest, you're postured because of the seat through the blood of Jesus, that we are the body of Christ in this earth today, and we are under the positioning of God himself Jesus, the blood of Jesus is our conquistador, and we are going to hand the state of Georgia into the hands of the Most High God for His glory and His purpose. Amen. Amen. Wow. Excellent. Now you see why I did it that way. Each person has something, and we'll do some more of this because there's so much that could be shared. Um, I always find it interesting to discover how in the timing of the Lord we are. Um, this is the Sunday that we celebrate Rosh Kadesh for moving into the month of Tammuz. And as I was looking at it and trying to say, Lord, what do you want me to do this morning? Because I could have just gone through and done total everything we did on the tour. And he said, no, I want you to take a look at the key points of Rosh Kadesh for Tammuz. And I do not have slides today because quite honestly, yesterday I crashed. If you ask Mike, I slept all day um, and I did. But I wanna start with reading a few verses out of Psalm 34, out of the Passion Translation. Lord, I'm bursting with joy over what you've done for me. My lips are full of perpetual praise. I'm boasting of you and all your works, so let all who are discouraged take heart. Join me, everyone. Let's praise the Lord together. Let's make him famous. Let's make his name glorious to all. Listen to my testimony. I cried to God in my distress, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Gaze upon him, join your life with his, and joy will come. Your faces will glisten with glory. You'll never wear that shame face again. Then it jumps down to verse 8. Drink deeply of the pleasures of this God. Experience for yourself the joyous mercies he gives to all who turn to hide themselves in him. Worship in awe and wonder, all you who've been made holy. For all who fear him will feast with plenty. Even the strong and the wealthy grow weak and hungry. But those who passionately pursue the Lord will never lack any good thing. Amen. Isn't that a great word? Those who passionately pursue the Lord will never lack any good thing. Say, Lord, that's me. I'm positioning myself to passionately pursue you, knowing that as I pursue you, I'll lack no good thing. Wow. See, there's some characteristics in the month of Tammuz that we need to pay close attention to. Every month has certain cycles that the Lord takes us through from year to year in order to keep us moving forward. Some people ask, well, why do you do this? It's because every year the Lord takes us through cycles of growth and development because the Hebraic mindset, the Eastern mindset, looked at things in a circle, in a spiral, rather than the way we typically do linear. We typically look from point A to point Z, and it's along a line. 
But the Hebraic Eastern mindset, you start here and you continue to move forward and upward. As you deal with things month to month, as God brings those things into you, you grow and mature. And I know us, we want to grow and mature. We want to be strengthened within a greater measure. And I believe it's very important that we take this month very seriously. One of the characteristics we have to pay attention to is the issue of eyes. We have to guard the eyes of our understanding. Guard what you're looking at. Guard where your focus is. What are you looking at? Where are you moving? If you're going down the road and your eyes get distracted, your car, you will steer in the direction of your eyes. Is that not the truth? So we have to focus. What are you looking on? What are you, what are you looking toward? One of the things over and over that came up in the Thin Places tour was how focused they were. They did not allow things around them to take them into distraction. They remained focused on the Lord. We have to watch carefully what we're focusing on because this is a month when the enemy will attempt to put the light out of your eyes. How many of you have walked into stores and you've seen somebody and you go, oh, that's a believer because you see the light in their eyes? Or you've had somebody speak to you and and identify you as a follower of Jesus because they say they see light in you. When we were leaving uh, out of Cardiff, Wales the other day, I was buying a couple of items in the gift store. And I started talking to the woman that was checking us out. And I don't even know what I said, but she then said, I'm a Christian. And I said, I thought so. And she said, I have, I really am praying for your nation. She said, all during the 2020, end of the pandemic and the end of 2020, I watched some guy as y'all, as a group of people went across the nation praying. And I said, Dutch sheets. And she said, yeah. I said, well, he's, he's a friend of mine, and we're, we're aligned together. I said, if you watched all those, I was on all of those but one. And so we got into this conversation, and she said, my eyes are fixed on the Lord in praying for America. She says, I listen or read the Give Him 15 every morning. See, there was light connecting. That was not the only time that happened during the trip. When someone would say, we're praying for you. We're standing with your country. We are contending. But see, we have to watch what are we looking at? Because if your eyes get distracted by the crazy in the world or your eyes get distracted by your pain or by something that's got going right, the light in your eyes begins to dim. You begin to lose that brightness of your view. See, we have to press into the Lord and his goodness with a greater pursuit. That seems to be a theme today. A greater pursuit and focus this month. As we step into the month of Tammuz, discipline yourself to focus and pursue in a greater measure. I'm going to tell you, we're going to have to up our game on our pursuit. When Kevin was sharing all across the tour how that the, the, the believers that were in these monasteries, in these apostolic hubs, they memorized all of the Psalms, all 150, and they would pray them daily. I'm letting that just sink in. I mean, just the thought of memorizing Psalm 119 or 118, I mean, just like is mind-boggling to me. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. But no, all 150. And they would get up and pray every few hours. They would gather together to pray together, and they would pray the Psalms. And they didn't just pray the nice little Psalms that make us feel good. 
They prayed those smite them God prayers. They did it all because it was in them. They would hand write the scriptures, not in a messy handwriting. I'm talking with great detail and beauty and artistic design. When you write something over and over again, do you know what? It gets on the inside of you. So here's my challenge. I woke up this for, with this for us today. Every day this month, I want you to write out a psalm. I want you to painstakingly write it. Because I believe what will happen as you write a psalm every day, that psalm will get in you. Let's just do the first 30. Okay? Let's make it easy. But let's start. Let's begin to get that word on the inside of us in a new way. Memorize. Work it. I mean, some of us, I mean, memory has never been my greatest suit. But I'm saying, God, I've got to memorize more of your word. So that when you don't have access to pull your phone or pull your iPad or pull your Bible, you've got word on the inside of you that you pull. Because God can't bring to your remembrance what's not on the inside. You notice it's bring to your remembrance. He can tell you things that's not on the inside, but the word of God says that he will bring to your remembrance everything God has said. So you've got to have it in your memory. So memorize. Can you tell I've been in Ireland? Yes. (laughs) The second thing is we have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable this month. Vulnerability is not something that we... um, typically give ourselves to because we're trained to protect ourselves we're trained to to guard against vulnerability and there's a right place for that you need to not just make yourself vulnerable everywhere but we have to allow our shells of protection of self-protection the shells that have been created by past wounds and past offenses and things that have happened to us that caused us to, to put up this shield that says, well, I can't trust that, so I protect myself. And God's saying, no, 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 I need you to let those shells down because your shells will block you from a greater intimacy with the Lord. We think the shells don't block us from the Lord, but they really do. Because we'll go, well, God, you can come this far, but no further because the pain's too great here. Or the disappointment is too great. Or maybe I'm afraid of what you may ask me to do. So work this month is getting the shields down. Ask the Lord to show you where you've got a shield up. You know, we, we talk about, well, you can go, you can have the whole house, just don't go in this closet. That's one of those shields. And we do that with God. And he's saying, let, your, let me in. Because if he comes in, do you know it will always and only be for your good? It may, it may ouch for a moment, but it's for your good. It will always bring good. But being vulnerable also enables you to enter into a greater depth of intimacy with your fellow believers. It'll help you move into a greater authentic relationship with each other. One of the things about traveling together when you're in a group of 28, you get kind of vulnerable because you're with each other all the time. And I believe we develop some greater depth of relationship. And part of my exhortation to us is that we continue to develop that and let it spread and let it grow so that we have that depth of intimacy with the Father and with each other so that out of that relationship there is the flow of life. Because if we are hesitant with each other, the life and the gift that's in you will not have a place to connect in the person next to you. 
The scripture in Ephesians 4 says that every joint is to supply, right? Well, if you've got shields and barriers and you're not willing to be vulnerable, how can your supply flow? It's just going to stay locked up in your cylinder, right? And God wants us to let down those barriers so that we can move into a greater dimension of every joint supplying. There's great supply in the house. There's great gifts in the house. There's great capacity to love and walk next to each other. But I'm going to tell us, folks, we have to choose to trust. Philosophers say that trust has to be gained, but that doesn't line up with Scripture. Trust is a choice. Respect can be lost by behaviors that violate trust. But trust is a choice. And the Lord said to me several months ago, the way you trust other people is a direct indication of your trust of me. Can you trust the Lord with the people that he's brought you into relationship with? Yes. And he will show you how to walk that in authenticity and with integrity. And in a way that if you can trust God, he will protect you. And if somebody is doing something wrong, is not God big enough to defend But that's another level of trust for all of us to walk into. The next part of this month is about alignment. Or I liked what the Lord said to Sandra about positioned for conquest. The way I've heard it is aligned for conquest. Because to be positioned is to be in proper alignment. Um, Many of you know that our oldest son fell and broke his foot a few weeks ago, and they thought it was one major bone broken and ended up being five or six. He's having to have his foot, he had to have surgery to have it repositioned, realigned to be held back together so he can walk. Positioning is important. Alignment is important. If it's important in our physical body, how much more is it important for us in the spirit? See, when we're not properly aligned, the enemy can easily pick us off. A lot of people end up picked off because they're not aligned, because they're not connected to someone else, some other people who love and care for you. And it's, it's not just a horizontal thing, it's a vertical thing. It's, we've got to be aligned with people who love, care, and will nurture us and who will speak truth and love. Alignment for, for conquest is important. And it, this is a month where we have to watch our covenant alignment relationships because they are linked with power and strength because when we're properly connected, we are stronger We're better together than we are apart every time. So this month, check your alignments to ensure that they are secure and healthy. Make sure to guard over the covenants and the relationships you enter into this month. When I was doing some study and I felt the Lord say, be very, very careful about those who would seek to entice you into relationships that would take you out of relationships that God has told you to, you are to be in. And the enemy is never brazen. I mean, he is brazen, but on this point, he's typically very, very subtle. And it will be like, can be like an Absalom. Well, yeah, David's not really taking care of you. Come with me, I'll take care of you. You're not getting the opportunities you need to there. Come with me. I will give you the opportunities. Watch for the subtleties of handshakes to take you out of position that God has positioned you in for. This is also a month to develop a new way of seeing. How many of you want to see better? In the natural and in the spirit, right? (laughs) 
One of the ways to develop your seeing eye in the spirit is avoid self-pity. Because if you're looking at everything through your eyes of hurt and disappointment and feeling sorry for yourself or trying to get other people to feel sorry for you, it will taint the way you see in the spirit. It will cause everything to be skewed and off course. Idolatry will block your view. You won't be able to see properly. Negativity. Watch your mouth this month and don't give in to negativity. Anything that takes the light out of your eyes, shut it down. If it causes you to see darkly, get rid of it. Readjust your focus. Look at the light and be transformed. Look at the glory of God and be transformed from glory to glory. You will begin to see better. Look with eyes of faith. You can see all the self-pity, the idolatry, the negativity, the, the murmuring, the complaining, the listening to negative reports. All of that causes you to look in the wrong direction. And it steals faith. It will take faith away from you. And God's saying this month, practice looking with eyes of faith. In other words, rehearse what God has said. Stop listening to what the world is saying and remind yourself, rehearse day by day, what has God said and what is God saying. When the word of God comes, it causes faith to arise on the inside of us, right? Well, nurture what God has said. God has said America shall be saved. He has said that there is victory in our future. We're going to go through some shaking, folks. It's not going to be all hunky-dory and easy. But we must keep our eyes fixed on what the Lord has said so that we keep moving forward in faith so that you are continually being filled with light. I understand that we need to look at what's going on in the world to be able to know what's going on. Do not focus there. If you stay focused there, you will find yourself going into darkness rather than into light. Keep your eyes focused on light and the goodness of God. This is also a month to work on the development of the inner fruit of the Spirit. Review your progress. Take a look at where you were a year ago, and like a film strip, look over the year, and how have you progressed? How are you operating in love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, and self-control? How are you growing in these areas? What do you need to do? Ask the Lord, how do I grow in patience? Do we dare ask that? <laughs> Holy Spirit, mature us in patience. See, we've got to take time to make the adjustments that the Lord tells us we need to make. Holy Spirit will reveal it so that we can grow. And then ask Holy Spirit to show you how you need to be moving forward to come into even greater fruit. Greater and greater fruit. Fruit that remains. And one of the things that we need to do is any false image that you have about yourself will affect the fruit that you're growing. Think about this for a minute. If you have negative thoughts about yourself and you're always saying how you're whatever, I'm not going to plant thoughts except good ones, it will keep you from operating in peace. If you're speaking negatively about yourself, if you're, God said you were this and you're saying, yeah, but I'm a worm, what's happening? It's disrupting your peace. It's disrupting your faith. It's disrupting the fruit and the flow of Holy Spirit. So be careful that you don't live in that negative cycle. Bring yourself into the place of listening to Holy Spirit, looking at God, looking at his word, and saying, God, I'm choosing to align with you. I'm choosing to believe what you say 
not everything else that has been said. Deal with anger, bitterness, judgment, unresolved relational issues, and rejection of who God has made you to be. You know, one time the Lord said to me, would you please quit complaining about yourself? And I went, okay. He said, because every time you do, you're telling me I didn't do something right. Ouch. See, beating ourselves up and putting ourselves down does not help us grow into the maturity of who God says we are. Rehearsing and bringing ourselves into an agreement with who God says we are will deal with a lot of that extra stuff that blocks us from our progress and our moving forward. This is a month of worship. I know our worship team loves that. I know this house loves that. But it is a season for us to guard worship, that we worship in spirit and in truth. Exercise your spirit, man, in worshiping, rising up and lying down all through the day. I love what Nathaniel does. He has an alarm. I discovered this a few months ago on his phone that goes off and it's a praise break. Is that not the truth? A time to intentionally stop in the middle of his busy day and praise the Lord. That sounds a whole lot like the old Celtic saints because they had set times and they would get called together, stop whatever you're doing and focus. We need to do that. We need to saturate ourselves in the word of God and exercise your spirit, man, in worshiping in the spirit. This is a month when the Israelites, after they came out of, out of Egypt, this is the month when they built the golden calf. That is a warning for us to not build a golden calf around how you want to worship. About, around the style of what you like. Don't build an altar, a golden calf, around your past experiences. Don't go into nostalgia. We have a tendency in our worship to be nostalgic because we know how God met us in a certain moment. And those are good things to remember, but do not allow that to build a golden calf. Because I'll tell you, if you build a golden calf around a certain way of doing things, God has a way of bringing a hammer to crush it. And it's not pleasant. So let's build worship that is pure and holy and filled with the word and with the spirit. And under worship, avoid creating God in your own image. Or creating a God that's made by your own hands or according to your personal preferences. It's a month. Really watch. Read the word of God so you get such a picture of who God is that you're all the false images of God are torn down and broken down. And then a month of vision. This takes us back to our eyes, but this takes us into the place of vision by the Spirit. Look again at what God has said to you. What God has revealed to you in the past, lift your eyes up and look again. It's a time when he will begin to show you additional things. He'll begin to refine that. See, we can't just live on a vision from yesterday. We have to constantly be looking to the Lord for fresh revisioning of the vision he gave us. Because an old a vision you had 20 years ago that hasn't been brought forward into today can become rigid and death, not life. Don't allow yourself to get stuck where you were because you're not in the same place you were and the world is not in the same place. God wants to bring you into greater clarity of the vision. It won't contradict that vision, but it will have a greater clarity of what you need for the days ahead. Let God show you the vision of who you are. See, I think one of the big things that we're missing right now as the body of Christ is we are not fully seeing who God says we are as the ecclesia. 
We still have this tendency to believe we're less than or that we're subject to going off in a, in a cave until the world gets so bad God rescues us. Jesus is coming back for a bride who is pure and spotless and just like him. Not running from the enemy, not shrinking back from the battle at the gate, but those that are fully aligned with the head, fully positioned and postured by the grace of God, fully seeing that he is the great I am. That he is the victorious God. We don't serve a God who is being defeated. I don't care what it looks like right now. Our God never loses. And part of the reason we're going through what we're going through right now in the nation and in the nations, because folks, it's not just here, and this is not political, this is about an agenda in the world to put Christians into a place of silence and not being who we are, and I, we have got to shake ourselves out of it, begin to see who, God, who our God is. That's first and foremost. See who our God is. He's great. He's mighty. He's not like the Wizard of Oz and this little bitty guy between, behind a curtain. We've got too many people who think our God is like the Wizard of Oz. That is not who He is. He is the God who spoke and created all of the universe. Who speaks and everything comes into an existence. He is the God who rules and reigns on high. He is the eternal judge of all the universe. There is no other God like him. As he was in the beginning, so he is today. As he was in the deliverance of Israel out of Egypt, so he is today. In our day. The word that came forth over the last several days through a dream from Gina Golston and then Dutch has unpacked it on Giffen 15 and then released it Friday night at the Hub in Ohio. Command forward. F-O-R-E-W-O-R-D. In other words, command the original intent. Command the original covenant. Paint the borders of your state. The end of March, early April, God said to me, go around your state and secure the borders. Months before this word came out. We're hearing, folks. See, we've got to secure our borders for proper alignment for the moving forward in the days ahead. We cannot be taken off course. Aligned for kingdom purposes. See, where does this go to? It goes all the way back to Robert Hunt at Cape Henry. The ship had come... They had had a rough journey across the ocean. They fasted and prayed for three days before they went ashore. When they came ashore, they had to be spiritually prepared for the covenant they were staking in the land. That's the forward. That's God's original intent over our nation. That the gospel of the kingdom would be preached throughout this land and to nations beyond. That everything that we do in this nation was to be to the praise and glory of our God. That's who we are. So as we are commanding forward around our state, I was reminded over the last couple of days as I've prayed into this, when I went to New Ebenezer outside of Savannah, and there was a group of Salzburgers who were there that dedicated this state to the Lord with a similar declaration as what Robert Hunt did. It's our foreword over this state. That this is a state that is destined to display the kingdom of God. See, that's our forward. 
See, we've got to rehearse these things. We've got to know what it is God has said so that when the shaking and as the shaking comes, we're not taken off course. Because if we don't remember what God has said, we will not be able to walk in what God is saying. And God has said, it's time. This morning, the Lord said to me as I came into the sanctuary, he said, in a season typically known for relaxation and vacation, you must prepare and secure your positioning in Christ aligned by his spirit with strategies from the throne room to move forward in the days ahead. Be alert to wanting things the way you have known them in the past that would produce any measure of resistance to what the Lord is calling us to in this season. Stay near the fire of God to keep you soft and pliable. Drink deeply of the word, the water of the word, to keep you from becoming brittle and inflexible and to keep the light of God shining in and through you. Guard your covenant relationships, protect and guard them. Be careful regarding those who would seek to pull you into any relationship that compromises what God has said and established you for to be aligned and connected to in this hour. Strengthen yourself by praying in the Holy Spirit. Strengthen your spirit man by the word, by worship, and by fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.42 says, Every believer was faithfully devoted to following the teachings of the apostles. Their hearts were mutually linked to one another, sharing communion and coming together regularly for prayer. And I close with this, 2 Corinthians 13.14. Now may the grace and joyous favor of the Lord Jesus Christ the unan, I can't say that word. How's that? Unambiguous. It's jet lag. Unambiguous love of God and the precious communion that we share in the Holy Spirit be yours continually. Be yours continually. God's calling us into a place that we are rightly aligned with him and with each other, with focus, with discipline, in worship, in tenacity, in perseverance, in steadfastness, so that his kingdom could advance in us, among us, and through us to the praise and glory of his grace. I bless you all. Have a wonderful Father's Day. And we will be back with you Tuesday night. God bless.